Formal peace negotiations are set to start next week between Israel and Syria. The two countries stopped peace negotiations eight years ago, unable to overcome the main stumbling block, the Golan Heights. RT's correspondent Paulus Lee reports from the disputed territory. The new round of Israeli-Syrian talks is expected to get underway in the next few days, but they're being held in secret, and no one's quite sure what will come out of them. Four separate issues are on the table borders, security, water, and the normalization of relations between the two countries. But here in Israel, most of the population are not taking these talks too seriously, at least not yet. While here in Majd al-Shams, a Syrian village in the Golan Heights, occupied by Israel since 1967, residents have their ears to the ground. They're hearing different whispers, which is why, for the first time in years, you're seeing the Syrian flag flying on Israeli soil. Over the past few days, the red stripes and stars of the Syrian nation have been flying from the rooftops of buildings throughout the village, a sure sign that people here want to return to their families on the other side of the border. After Israel occupied the Golan Heights in 1967, families were split and relatives have been unable to see one another for years. Maher Abu Jadbal is building his house right at the edge. He prefers not to see the border fence that's only 10 meters from his property. But until his village returns to Syria, this is the closest he can get to seeing his cousin. I just talk with him to in the mic. I just uh, see uh, see my family in in this uh, the, the camera. I can't come because the danger is here in the in the border. I am cry in my sight. It's really, really difficult. Ali Almari says he was once the millionaire of the Golan, but then the war came and he found himself on Israeli soil, cut off from his business contacts. Today, all he has is a small exchange shop and no illusions about peace. I know war and I want nothing more than peace. I was a soldier in the Syrian army. My mother was killed by a 50-ton bomb that exploded outside our house. I'm not hopeful that one day there will be peace, but if the Israelis cut a deal with Syria, it will be more stable than peace between Egyptians and Palestinians. Away from the cameras, it's not so clear-cut that everyone in the village wants to return to Syria. They are afraid that they will find themselves one day again under the Syrian regime. And they know that the Syrians will never forgive them if they even made faces of being happy under the Israeli occupation. So this is why they have to play the game in order to stay alive. But here is another problem that only peace can solve. More than 20 citizens of the village are inside Israeli jails. One of them is expected to die from cancer in the next few months. His comrades demonstrate almost daily, trying to get him freed before the talks. What's not clear is will he be the last casualty of the conflict between Israel and Syria, or the first symbol of a new peace deal in the Middle East. Paulus Lea, RT, Majd al-Shams.